As many as nine in 10 people breathe in polluted air, and air pollution causes about 7 million premature deaths every year, and that number is estimated to double by the year 2050 if nothing is done about it. And that's why a United Nations resolution of 2019, you know, decided to declare September 7th every year as the International Day of Clear Air for Blue Skies. Now, it's a program facilitated by the United Nations Environment Program. And the theme for this year is healthy air, healthy planet. Let's invite our con the convener, Stop the Sooth Movement, Tunde Bello, to join us. Good morning, Mr. Bello. Good morning. All right, I want us to begin with air quality in Nigeria. What's the um, situation like? Um, good morning. Uh, first, uh, I'm not the convener. I'm part of the conveners, you know, so um, for the Stop the Suit campaign in River State. As regards um, clean air, we all know that um, Nigeria is one of the most polluted countries in the world. So that is to tell you that we cannot be arguing that because we know that our air is not clean. Uh, due to various reasons, um, many factors have contributed to the issue of air pollution, uh, including industrial activities, uh, unregulated activities in the manufacturing sector, um, oil production, as well as chemical production, in all the areas that they have these plants and uh, uh, investment in Nigeria. So if we're talking about clean air, we, we are not close to breathing clean air in Nigeria. I can say that with a statement of fact. Um, all right, we're gonna go deeper into the Nigerian um, you know, situation. Um, Port Harcourt, of course, uh, is um, a river state generally is, is a place of concern. Um, but I, I have I've looked through the um, UNEP um, uh, statement and of course it says a healthy air, he healthy planet I believe, yes, healthy air, healthy planet that's the theme for this year's um, you know, um, celebration but I want your thoughts do you think that there are certain UN goals or concerns that are difficult to sell in developing countries and third world countries because you know there's, there's just too many other concerns you know that make things like this almost irrelevant yeah um, you agree with me that um, our our attitude, our orientation, our survival instincts, and the way we go about our things in the country is just not the normal way. A country where everybody seems to be the providers of whatever they need. For example, um, I can't remember how long we have bought kerosene in the first stations in the river state. I've been living here for over for almost 20 years. I can't remember the last time I walked in into a fuel station to buy kerosene. So now imagine, just escalate that to the six states, to the third six states of the Federation where it is difficult for people to get what they want, where they're supposed to get it. So people need to go and fend for themselves. You, you have to buy kerosene that is adulterated, and what that means is that um, whenever you are burning the kerosene, you're releasing into the air unsafe pollutants, things that will hurt everybody that is breathing in that air at a particular point, at a particular place. So for developing countries, because of the way we do our things, look at the manufacturing concern, for example. Technology is not used in most of the manufacturing concerns that we have in Nigeria, where countries have gone into automation um, using te technology to do their manufacturing concerns and processes. If you go to a place like uh, Potaco Refinery to look at their processes, look at the technology that is in use, you will agree with me that we are way, way, way behind. And that is a federal government establishment. So, if you're talking about achieving millennium development goals in developing countries, we are way, way behind, Nigeria inclusive, because we do not have the capacity. The human capacity is there, but we do not have the technology. Now, if you want to narrow it down to River State, for example, where people involved in illegal refinery, and what does that mean? What makes it illegal? 
The process is not refined. The process is not complete because they have to circumvent. Instead of using maybe gas, they are using fire, they are using firewood. So all of these things contribute. If you look at the fuel we are using in our cars, you and I, I mean, you're in Lagos. If you go through the streets or even in Abuja, you see the emission from our cars. These are the contributors because even the fuel we are buying are not clean. And then the maintenance culture is not there. So all of these things contribute to the issue of air pollution and then the inability to achieve the millennium development goals. It's very simple. We, we cannot achieve that if the technology and the capacity to do it is not there. Yeah, you know, and you know the reason I, I pointed that out, you know, is also because of the you know the poverty um, uh, aspect. How do you tell you know a woman who fries akara at the roadside to f feed herself and her family that she needs to stop using that firewood because, well, it's it's polluting the air. Let me let me cut you now. In three weeks, or say in one month, I have bought two point five kg gas for five thousand naira for 5,008 and for 7,000 naira in one month, within a month. And when I put it out there that, can somebody explain to me why we are buying LPG for 7,000 naira for 2.5 kg? The responses I got from enlightened people shocked me. Now, some of them were saying, let's go to firewood. Some were saying, let's go to coal. I mean, these are things we shouldn't be talking about in the 20, in 2021. So if it is difficult for people who are earning 200,000, 300,000, 500,000 a month to get gas, to boil water, to make food, then how much more the majority of Nigerians that are in the rural areas or even within the city that are very, very poor or who can afford three square meals a day. So it's a whole lot of issues that we must look at. The fundamental has to be the poverty level, has to be the orientation, has to be government ability to provide from taxes collected, from revenue earned, and give back to people. The taxes collected, the revenue earned, is for the distribution, not for a particular set. So if you look at all of that, it contributes to the issue we have on ground. And I am not shocked that we are where we are as of today. Okay, so I, I want us to also talk about how we can improve the air quality in Nigeria, like the practical steps. We know the government needs to do something. What are the practical steps that we can take, you know, to begin to have cleaner air in the country? Okay, while we were campaigning for stop the suit and ensuring that we have clean air in River State, one of the demand, one of our 14 point demands was that the sources of this pollution. Number one, the JTF activity by deconstructing illegal products ceased. I mean, if we talk about illegal products, the illegal products are gotten from somewhere. So we need to track. This is a national wealth. This is something that belongs to Nigeria. So if these things are being stolen, or they are being received in the wrong hands, we should identify how is that done. Now, petrol or fuel or crude oil is pumped from one source to another. How do people get to know when this thing is being pumped? How do people get to know when these things are being distributed? What methodology do we use in distributing our national product? Because if you say that somebody is stealing your product, then you should find a way to stop that theft. So the first thing we must do is to identify the source of theft, where people are getting this product from. Secondly, if these products are seized, do we have the capacity to warehouse them or to appendix them? Because if you, if you catch a thief, for example, and you find something that the person has stolen from him, what do you do to that thing? It becomes an exhibit. You have to keep it somewhere. So if the JTF, the, the, the security agencies, are seizing products from people who are stealing national products. Where do they keep those things? So we need to find out. We need to have a technology or a farm tank or a place where these seized products 
are kept, not just destroyed and brought into the air like that. Because most times, there is no space to keep all of these things. And what the JTF does is, they just destroy them. And then the, the pollutants come into the air. So secondly, we must encourage and engage in technology. It is very, very important. The fuel we are talking about, a lot of countries are moving away from it. People are changing, and technology is changing every spheres of lives. So Nigeria has to develop a, a pattern, a policy, a regulation that controls the issue of what we use. Now, we talk about gas flaring. That is another pollutant. We've been saying that we're going to stop gas flaring since 2010. And this is 11 years. We haven't done anything major in that area. Another thing, of course, it has to do with the things we use in producing all, of the, all the things that we're using. If you go to the petrochemical, for example, um, you'll be shocked. I'm, and I'm, I'm challenging you, journalists, today to, to do a little bit of more investigation into the processes of all of these plants that we're mentioning for you to see how these things are done. And I mean, we can't achieve clean air if the fundamentals are not being touched. Right. And the fundamentals right. are the refineries, the illegal uh, refineries, and all of the fuel that we're using in the environment. There is, um, of course, the call to stop burning seized um, petroleum products by the GTF, like you mentioned. I think it also goes to the Nigerian Customs Service and the NDLEA. Because every now and then there's a chicken being burnt or marijuana seized drugs or whatever uh, being burnt, you know, in different parts of the country. Um, yeah. Mr. Bello, I, I want you to, you to share your, your um, or, or, you know, move into talking about the health concerns, um, underlying health factors or health concerns that aren't even spoken about a lot here in Nigeria, um, uh, you know, from polluted air. Well, uh, I'm going to use rivers. I've lived in Lagos for 31 years before I moved to uh, Rivers State, and I know how it is. If you stand on the Cold Bridge, if you stand on the Todd Mainland Bridge, if you stand on Qatar Bridge, if you go to Ikorodu, if you go to Magodo, if you go to Orishesi, if you go to Ojota, if you go to Itimu, if you go to Moe, um, you see all of these sites where various activities are going on uncontrollably, where people just do whatever they like for survival. And the reason, of course, we've discussed the issue of poverty and orientation. And then let's look at the health implication, and I'd like to use River State, for example. We breathe in suits, and then we are here, we are with um, the coronavirus and, um, you know, affecting everybody, the issue of respiratory system. You see a lot of that occurring this year, and you begin to wonder what is the cause. Uh, it is not about witches or witchcraft or wizardry or whatever. I, I think the, the underlying factor is that people are now having respiratory issues because of air pollution and unclean air. And I think um, Nigerian government, whether at the state level, at the federal level, or at the local government level, needs to be more responsible for its citizen. You know, it's important that we understand that all of these policies that we're doing as regards taxes, digital economy, Twitter, and all of those things, you're not doing this for yourselves. You're doing this for the people of this country. And it is, it is absolute irrelevant for anything to be done where people are not healthy. People need to be healthy for them to enjoy policies. So if you're doing any policies that is not people-friendly, we must look at our health policies. How do we even manage? There is a Clean Health Act in Nigeria, of 1956 or better, but I think it was uh, they are trying to adjust it or something. I think the legislators need to also look at the issue of the act governing the issue of um, whether it is federal government that is exclusively responsible for environment or the state, because. I remember meeting with the governor, with my team, and all of the stuff to campaign, and the governor said something, they said, go back to Abuja, where they have the responsibility to take care of the environment. It is, with, it is not within our powers. And of course, the government at the center will tell you, go back to the state that has the numbers, the, the data of the people who are into illegal refinery. So you see, government needs to be responsible, mm -hmm. because this thing that we're building it is cancerous. Whether we like it or not, and it is not about now. In the next five years, in the next ten years, you just see the majority of the people living with cancer. And health people have spoken about it several times. 
times with that number that once these things are not attended to, we risk the issue of people with living with cancer. That's just a simple truth. All right, finally, finally um, get to share with us, you know, the campaign for this year, Healthy Air, Healthy Planet. Um, what, you know, is the campaign pushing this year and what do you think Nigeria uh, should be able to, able to tap into, Nigerians rather, should tap into with uh, this year's campaign? I think first, uh, as, a, as a group, uh, today we are going all out, although on social media, because gathering has become an issue now, so we're passing the message through our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on our personal pages, on WhatsApp statuses, that first people need to understand that the environment is the responsibility of everybody, not minding that we have a state of federal government. I mean, why should people dump refuse in drainages, blocking drainages? Why should people just eat things in their cars and drop remnants on the streets? Um, I see when it's raining, people just dump their refuse in the, in the drainages. I mean, in 2021, in 2021, we still have this mentality that when it's raining, we need to dump our refuse into the gutters and into the drainages so that the rain can take them away to where exactly, I don't know. So people need to be more responsible. If you can generate the refuse, you can dump it responsibly. One of the campaigns that we're doing, uh, we doing is that people should learn to take care of their environment. And then, of course, we need to also make sure that we do not add to the pollutants. If, you're, if you go to the slaughter everywhere in Nigeria, you see where people are using car tires to burn and get meat from cow, from, from uh, pigs, from uh, rams and all of that. That is dangerous to our health. You see people are uh, cutting down trees. We need to start making reservations for this kind of thing. Our streets should not be lit with dirt and um, garbages. We should ensure that our areas, our cities are covered with trees. We, we engage in tree planting and honestly, you'll be shocked to see that people are just uh, saying that, why are you planting trees in front of my house? Why are you planting trees on this street and all that? Uh, I think we also need the National Orientation Agency to come into this space to ensure that people are every day encouraged and enlightened to understand that the environment responsibility is from everybody. Parents need to teach their children. Children need to understand that the environment is for us. Um, if you look at the amount of plastics that we generate in this country, yeah, there, there's a lot. There's, a, there's so much. Uh, they need to be. Uh, it's, it's, need to it's, be um, it's, New policies. I'm sad. Yeah, there need, there need to be completely new policies, even with uh, plastic uh, bags and, and and some of all of that. Exactly. Tree, tree planting also has to. Um, it's something that needs to be spoken about more often. Tundebelo, thank you so much um, for you your time much. this morning. Thank Thanks you. for speaking with us, and we wish you a successful campaign. Looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, that's it um, for today. This is a very interesting conversation that I'm very passionate about. But your perspective is that we have hunger to deal with first. But, I mean, if the air pollution kills us all, you no, know, who so, will be there to eat so the food that's available? Have all hunger. I, was just, know, I was just saying that there are certain conversations that are difficult to sell to people because, um, you know, they first of all need to survive. You know, it's going to be hard for the United Nations, for the UNEP, for these you know, NGOs and the, and the likes to convince anybody who's still struggling to even find the kerosene to cook um, that they should start and using clean energy. And those kerosene kill people. Yeah, you know, they're, they're struggling. The day, so so it's, it's, it's we need information. We need enlightenment Tree about this. Also. Definitely. You know, I, I think it was two weeks ago that I put out something on my Instagram about when, you know, how many houses these days we grew up in an environment where there was a tree in every house. You, your, your home had, your house and, had something. And that brought fresh air. Orange trees, um, a banana, pawpaw, uh, tangerine, um, 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 sour We all soap. had there gardens. Was yeah, there know? was something. Well, not, not even necessarily a garden. But every house in the 90s when I, I grew up, there was a particular tree. If, even if it was the almond tree, there was something in every home. And every time, you know, if you a couple of months, you know, it gets ripe, you're excited because you want to pluck it and eat. If you go to your friend's house, there's something to pluck. There's a mango tree. These days, there's nothing. In, in, in the whole of phase, like in phase one where I leave, the whole of Folashibo, I don't remember any house that I can think of right now that I can say, okay, They cut them this down and they build a, a mini flat in France. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, that's a show for you today. Um, Tuesday edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. If you missed out on any part of it, you can follow us on all our social media platforms. It's at Plus TV Africa 
on Facebook, Instagram, and on our YouTube channel as well, at Plus TV Africa. We also have a new YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Look forward to you subscribing and engaging with our content online. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osao Gi Have a beautiful Tuesday.